Welcome to the live stream. Uh, wow, so much to talk about. Glad you're with me today. Uh, I, I don't even know where to start. I mean, it's gotten to the point where every day is scandal after scandal. Every day is another embarrassment, another uh, spilling the beans of information that our president should not really be talking to other people about. If you watched or listened to today's program and the clips are starting to come out um, now, the first one about two hours ago, the second one a half hour ago, the clips from today's program, um, I, I, I don't know whether to just start at the top or, or sort of how, how to even deal with this. Um, it's, it's insane what's going on. I guess the first thing is let's just talk about the live stream if this is your first live stream. Uh, yes, this is really live unless you're watching a replay. It is 6.31 p.m. on May 24th, 2017. It is really live. I'm here talking to you right now unless this is a replay. Number two. Super Chat is on. You can use Super Chat, which is the dollar sign below the chat window. Um, and I will take questions and comments through Super Chat uh, during the entire stream. Number three, new members and patrons who sign up or pledge during the stream will get a live shout out and thank you from me. I will sing your praises. Of course, membership is at davidpackman.com slash membership. There's a coupon code which will save you 40%. Use it if you like. It's I voted 17, all one word, all lowercase. You can also make a pledge at patreon.com slash Show. More on that later. Obvious trolling and hate will get you banned either by the moderators or me if I notice it. If your trolling is subtle, then it probably won't get you banned because no one will notice. As far as Patreon goes, we're up to 1,538 patrons. The goal for this live stream is 1,600. If we get to 1,600 patrons, which means just 62 more, doesn't matter the amount, a dollar a month counts. If we get to 1,600 patrons by the end of this stream, I will create and release exclusively to you as a viewer of this stream. Um, a coupon code, which will give you 50% off of membership. Okay, so that's patreon.com slash David Pacman Show. 1600 is the number that we are looking for. Okay, so let's just let's just jump in. Um, so on today's program, I mean, it was just story after story. Each story that has been uh, uh, at the top of our show in the first segment, the two or three stories at the beginning of the show for the last couple of weeks, under normal circumstances, each of those stories would warrant 24-hour news coverage for three to five days. But in the, in the era of Trump, they don't because it's scandal after scandal. Donald Trump has lawyered up, okay? And with regard to the Trump-Russia scandal, Donald Trump now has personally lawyered up, and that is in and of itself significant because that means that there is at least the anticipation of, of a possibility that Donald Trump will need to personally defend himself above and beyond the White House counsel, which is sort of like the White House staff attorneys in some way. But it's also interesting because when it comes to Trump, there's always some either double standard or Russia connection with everything he does. Trump's lawyer defending him with the entire, representing him, I guess right now would be the right way to say it, within the Russia scandal is a guy who also is the lead attorney in a federal civil lawsuit against a majority Russian government-owned bank called Sberbank. Not Burbank, but Sberbank. Um, you can't write this stuff. You, you truly cannot write this stuff. And uh, that, that in and of itself, the fact that the president now has a personal attorney representing him when it comes to the possible collusion with a non-friendly foreign state to gain the White House, that would be a major story We've had three or four other scandals related to Trump over the last 48 hours, barely even com computes, okay? Number two from today's program, um, John Brennan, former CIA director, he showed up yesterday and testified before the House Intelligence Panel. Now, I know you're probably, if you're like me, uh, and many of you are, <laughs> I don't even know what that means, it just sounds funny. Uh, if you're like me, you may not have that much confidence in the House investigation into Trump Russia at this point, but nevertheless, because of the entire Devin Nunes scandal. Nevertheless, former CIA director John Brennan shows up and says, yeah, I was, I, I was very concerned when I was still at the CIA about the contacts that were going on between Trump people and, and Russian uh, uh, individuals. And Republicans, they, they play this semantic game where Brennan's not the current CIA director, right? 
So he can't really say with certitude, yes or no, whether there was or wasn't collusion, right, between Trump and Russia. So Republicans ask Brennan, can you tell us, though, uh, Director Brennan, whether there was collusion between Trump and Russia? Is there any evidence whatsoever? And John Brennan says, I don't know. I'm not part of the investigation. I'm not part of the CIA anymore. The FBI is doing the investigation. I can't say. And then the Republicans say, so what you're saying, Director Brennan, is that if after this hearing, Democrats try to say that you pointed to Russian collusion, they would be misrepresenting what you're saying, right? They would be wrong. You've not pointed to any collusion. Brennan says, well, I, I can't say one way or the other. I'm not involved in the investigation. Ah, so it's not true if Democrats say that there is evidence of collusion. It's not true. It's not that it's not true. It's that I'm not involved. I don't know. I'm not involved in the investigation. Just embarrassing, embarrassing the way that Republicans have been handling that. And then we really got into, I mean, the most cringeworthy moment for me um, from Trump's entire trip so far is this note that he wrote at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, the Holocaust Memorial. And we, we put up the notes, and you can Google all this stuff. It's, it's all widely available. We put up the note that President Barack Obama left when he visited the Holocaust Memorial. Somber note, um, uh, about a page. Barack Obama-esque in every way. We put up the note that George W. Bush left. George W. Bush, not known as a particularly eloquent speaker, but he understood the gravity of, of the entire thing uh, and left a note in the guest book at Yad Vashem saying something along the lines of, uh, God bless Israel, right? God bless Israel, George W. Bush. And Donald Trump left a note in all caps, like a little kid. Uh, I mean, it's just bizarre that the optics of it are bizarre. It is a great honor to be here with all my friends. So amazing and we'll never forget it, exclamation point. It's the type of thing you leave like at, at a bar mitzvah, right? It's, it's the sort of thing you would put when you're 12 and you go to a bar mitzvah or, or, or a bat mitzvah, uh, if it's 12 more likely, and it had a great time, great seeing all my friends, never will forget it, exclamation point, all caps, print, right? But that's what Donald Trump wrote at the at the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem, one of the most somber and solemn places. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. And tomorrow on the show, there's actually video. Th this is just, it's, it's unbelievable. I mentioned today on the show that when Trump arrived in Israel from Saudi Arabia, he said, we've, we've arrived from the Middle East. Of course, Israel is in the Middle East. And there's actually now video of this. And there's a guy, uh, I forget exactly who it was. Uh, let me see if I have it in my notes here. It was, I, I want to make sure I have this. The, the, during the video, you see Israeli ambassador Ron Dermer face palms when Trump arrives in Israel and says, we've arrived, we've been in the Middle East up until this point. Um, I mean, it's, it, you know what's going on. I, I think at this point you have a sense of what's going on. Let's get to some of the super chats, okay? $2 super chat from Ellie. No comment or question. Thank you very much. $20 super chat from Frank McWright. Watched your show the other day. I understand how removing Trump isn't exactly a win for the opposition. However, my issue is that we're wasting years of getting real things done, which also seems unavoidable at this point. Okay, so Frank is, is um, uh, uh, referencing my, my story where I pointed out that it might not be the best thing to um, for Democrats and or progressives to impeach Donald Trump. It wasn't me saying I don't think Trump should or shouldn't be impeached. Obviously, if the evidence is that Trump should be impeached, Trump should be impeached. But what I pointed out was that it would be a disaster if Democrats lead the impeachment and then it fails to remove Trump. Because remember, the impeachment is just the start of the process. If Democrats lead an impeachment with a couple Republicans and it does not ultimately lead to Trump's removal, Trump is energized. Trump is completely energized and empowered, and it's a disaster for Democrats and progressives. If Republicans lead the impeachment um, for the good of the party, so to speak, and it succeeds, that's actually not that good for Dem Democrats either because some Republican voters will be mad about it, Trumpists, com committed Trumpists, but some Democrats, uh, some Republicans rather, will say, hey, you know what? Trump, was, Trump did bad things, but my party did the right thing and Republicans could still do well in 2018 and 2020. 
Uh, the other possibility is that we have to think about is obviously if Pence gets in there, you're talking, Frank, about we're wasting time getting real things done. If Mike Pence becomes president of the United States, it will become boring instantly, right? It's not day-to-day -day scandals and face palm and cringe, but he's a hardcore right-wing ideologue who could actually get things done and they won't be things that we want done, okay? So I think that it's just important not to see this impeachment scenario as some kind of panacea. Uh, because it, it may not be that. It, it may not end up being that. GR sent a $5 super chat saying, Pack DZ, take it from the top. Bring us to the progressive pastures of green emerald utopia. Science fiction is to us a Trumpless world. Love GR. All right. Uh, thanks very much, GR. Appreciate, appreciate the message. Chris Utzig sent a $5 super chat. Michael Shermer was on serious inquiries only and identity politics came up. Would you be interested in going on serious inquiries only and having a discussion with Thomas? I don't know who Thomas is or what serious inquiries only is. I interviewed Michael Shermer last week. I would be glad to consider going on, you know, if it's something that uh, uh, is not going to expose me to a new audience of any significant uh, magnitude, it may not be the best use of my time, but I'm more than willing to consider going on. I'll make a note to check out what that is. And if they want to contact me, I will be glad to consider it. Uh, Victor Savell has sent a $20 super chat saying, thank you, David, for the fantastic job. If Trump is impeached and Pence takes the role of president, what are your thoughts on the possibility of Pence's removal from the position as well as its at, and its consequences? Um, okay, so I addressed a little bit of this in some way, but you're getting at something else, which is it's possible, it's possible that if it depends on, we're thinking ahead many steps here, depending on why Donald Trump could be hypothetically impeached and removed from office, if it is campaign coordination with Russia, there's two possibilities which could lead to Mike Pence not ultimately being the president. And we're, we're thinking way ahead here, okay? But Victor, you asked the question, so I'm gonna answer it. If it's determined that Pence was just as complicit as Trump in the collusion with Russia, you could make the case that, why are we going to put Mike Pence in there? He could be removed for the exact same thing. Um, that's number one. Number two, if it's determined in some definitive way, and I'm thinking way ahead at this point, this would be incredibly difficult to do. But if it's determined that Donald Trump is only the president due to ac activity that was illegal or falls under, you know, treason, misdemeanor, uh, high crimes and misdemeanors, what, whatever, whatever phrase you want to use, rather than an impeachment, there could be a case made for an annulment of the election. This would be effectively unprecedented in American history. What we've seen with Trump is already um, uh, I, I unprecedented in American in American history, so who knows if that would happen? But if we if you want to make the case of for an annulment, then the entire election would be annulled. What do you do then? I have no idea. What are the legal repercussions? I have absolutely no idea. But but that those would be two scenarios in which Mike Pence would would not ultimately be president of the United States. Felipe Garcia sent a $5 super chat. What do you think of running on impeaching Trump in 2018? If we elect a Democratic House of Representatives, President Pelosi? I don't know if running on impeachment is a good idea. And, and again, this is because I think that if it's Democrats leading impeachment, um, bearing in mind that impeachment is not the removal of the president, it is the start of a process to explore whether the president did something worthy of removal. If Democrats lead an impeachment and it fails, that is a huge matzo ball hanging out there, right? It is a major problem politically for Democrats and it, em it empowers Trump, I, I would say. So I think that running on the impeachment of Trump is a major risk and I, I, don't, know that that's a, I, don't, I don't know that that's a direction I would go, okay? So, uh, all right, I, I've gotten caught up uh, on Super Chats. We talked about Trump and his bizarre note that he left at the Holocaust Memorial in Israel. Um, we talked on the program today about that leaked phone call between Donald Trump and the Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte. And in that, um, I, I won't rehash the entire analysis, but in this transcript that has been leaked, which again, people hear me talk about this, they say, oh, but David, that's fake news. It's not real. Nobody's agreeing that that's what took place, blah, blah, blah. No, uh, nobody is denying that, that this, is, this is the transcript that was leaked. 
uh, that this was a, the transcript that was leaked was real. Donald Trump criticized President Obama to Rodrigo Duterte. Again, still with the insecurity, talking about Obama. You're the president now. Conduct business with the president of the Philippines. Don't, don't slam Obama. Um, but also, and this now is becoming a bigger and bigger story, Donald Trump revealed the presence of two American nuclear submarines in Korean waters when talking to President uh, Rodrigo Duterte about Kim Jong-un. And we've now learned that the Pentagon was shocked by the fact that Donald Trump would reveal that over the phone in that way. Um, th this, so this is now the second time in a couple of weeks, of course, last week, I I've lost track of time, last week or the week before, you had Donald Trump in the Oval Office with two Russian agents, uh, two Russian officials, one of whom, the Russian ambassador to the US, Sergei Kislyak, is a suspected recruiter of Russian spies. Donald Trump leaked information about a suspected ISIS plot. We now know that that information came from our ally, Israel. Whatever you think about Israel's um, uh, politics, internal, external, whatever, we get valuable intelligence information from Israel. And Israel now is going to modify exactly as I said could happen the way in which they share information with the United States. Okay, so already Trump's loose lips um, creating problems with our allies. Now, Trump gets on the phone with Rodrigo Duterte and says, hey, we've got firepower. I don't want to use it, but we've got firepower that's 20 times stronger than what uh, uh, Kim Jong-un has, and we've got two nuclear subs there in Korean waters. Pentagon didn't want that uh, said. Pentagon did not authorize uh, the Filipino president to be told that that's what's going on, who, by the way, at the time that he took Trump's phone call, was in some kind of, uh, 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 of, of group meeting with other leaders. And uh, three defense officials from the Pentagon have now said, we never talk about submarines. We don't talk about the location of our submarines. And Donald Trump gets on the phone and says, hey, Kim Jong-un, he's a madman. We've got two nuclear subs in Korean waters. This is a national security risk. Donald Trump ran as though he was going to be uh, some kind of, of uh, uh, reversal from Obama who, according to the Trumpist, was not keeping us safe. Although, look at what happened under George W. Bush. Look at what happened under Barack Obama. Tell me, tell me what evidence, what data you can point to that suggests o Obama was not keeping us safe. Uh, and Trump said Obama was not keeping us safe, but I'm going to keep us safe. How does endangering an Israeli asset in the Middle East, who, who clearly has made inroads with ISIS, how does that keep us safe? How does that keep our allies safe? How does telling Rodrigo Duterte during a casual phone call uh, the location of two American nuclear submarines, how does that keep us safe? I, I Explain to me how we are safer because of the great national security leader, Donald Trump, as a result of the things that he is saying. It makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Um, let me send out a couple of uh, thank yous here. We do have a uh, membership. Membership is the number one funding source for our program. You can sign up at davidpackman.com slash membership. On the second page of the sign up, you will notice the coupon code field pointed out by that big red arrow. The coupon code that you can use to save 40% off of membership, you get 100% of the benefits, but you only pay 60% of the cost is I voted 17. And I want to send major, major thank yous to Francis... Ellen Greer Jr., who just signed up at davidpackman.com slash membership. I want to send a major thank you to Felissa Lazur, who signed up while we've been chatting here at davidpackman.com slash membership. Thank you. It's because of people like Francis and Felissa that we're able to do what we do. Thank you to Heidi Scott, who has signed up at davidpackman.com slash membership using, I might add, the coupon code IVOTED17. Thanks to Christopher Teixeira, who has signed up uh, also using the coupon code for 40% off at davidpackman.com slash membership. And thank you to Sherry Flack, who has signed up at davidpackman.com slash membership. Sherry, choosing to use, choosing to use the coupon code, I voted 17, which saves you 40%. You don't have to use it. It's available if you want to use it. And then, of course, pledges of any amount, even a dollar, a month. Welcome at patreon.com slash David Pacman Show. We started the stream 
with 1,538 patrons. And I hope that uh, by the end of the stream, that number will be higher. If we get to 1,600 patrons during the stream, I will create and uh, announce to you a coupon code for 50% uh, discount off of membership. So that, uh, that if we hit 1,600 patrons during the stream. Okay, the David Pakman Show has been getting some, some nice press lately, some nice articles written about different aspects of what's going on with the show. Uh, I want to tell you about a couple of these articles, okay? First and foremost, both articles relate to the YouTube advertiser boycott, all right? If, if you have no idea what this is, I'm going to give you the 30-second summary. This, as the story has gotten longer and longer, I've condensed the summary more and more to not spend a lot of time on what it is. YouTube advertiser boycott, March 31st, YouTube flips a switch. New algorithm decides when ads play before videos on YouTube. That's how channels like ours make money. Because of that, the day they flipped this algorithm on, we lost 99% of our revenue. 99% of our revenue overnight gone because uh, uh, of this new algorithm and because some of our content was, quote, controversial, unquote. Um, since then, some of that revenue has recovered and currently we're earning about a third of what we were on YouTube prior to this crisis. So that's why we've been pushing membership in Patreon. I mean, it's, it's just, it's numbers, right? It's math. We've got to make up that money. And that's why we, we've been talking about Patreon and membership so much. So uh, mid-April, really good article in the New York Times, April 17th, by Amanda Hess was written. The article is called How YouTube's Shifting Algorithms Hurt Independent Media. Very well-researched article, very thorough article, and you can find it by Googling How YouTube's Shifting Algorithms Hurt Independent Media. And it, it really featured... The David Pakman Show. It was an article about the new YouTube advertiser boycott, and it basically exclusively featured the David Pakman Show, um, and it was an extraordinary article. It was actual investigative journalism. Amanda Hess actually did the right thing, talked to me, went back and tried to verify independently the allegations that I made, came back to me, asked me for supporting evidence as to how we were being affected by the YouTube ad boycott. Really, really good article. More recently, however, uh, earlier, uh, late last week, an article in Wired was published. This article by Davy Alba in the business section. And the article is called, Want a Better Web? Here's an idea. Pay for it. And it again outlined, with much more recent information, because it was from May 19th instead of April 17th, the latest in terms of how the YouTube advertiser boycott is affecting the David Pakman Show. She also has a, a little quick summary, the history of the David Pakman Show, how we started. And it's a really, really good article. Go to wired.com. Uh, want a better web? Here's an idea. Pay for it. And uh, it, it basically got us up to speed with um, uh, uh, what is going on currently with the YouTube ad boycott, which is we're down about two thirds of that revenue. Now, um, we've made up some of that revenue through Patreon and through membership. That's a really good thing. We've still got a ways to go. And you know, the saddest thing is that we had major plans for 2017 in terms of growth and expansion. And because of this, a circumstance beyond our control, now we're in, let's just get back to where we were at the end of 2016. And some of the expansion plans temporarily, because I believe that ultimately the audience will understand the, the, the value and importance of programs like ours, and we will make up that revenue. Temporarily, the focus has become, let's get back to where we were and put some of those growth plans on hold. But that's okay. I, I genuinely, you know, if there's nothing to sort of um, activate against, or in this case, it's in, in favor of more independent funding for our program, uh, it can sort of become, uh, y y you can fall into, into a sort of um, uh, non-moving inertia. You know what I'm trying to say. This has really activated so many people in our audience, and we have so many new people, the 1,500 plus Patreon uh, donors, and over a thousand new members um, uh, since the, the, the this YouTube advertiser boycott started. So a lot of a lot of really good things are going on. And there's the possibility in the back of my mind that we might actually come out ahead, right? Because if we can replace the, all of the, the missing YouTube revenue, 
Um, now we're in the same spot financially, but way more independent. And then if the revenue comes back in full or, or we continue to grow, we actually end up in a better and more independent position. Okay, so that's the latest on the YouTube uh, ad boycott. Let's get back to Super Chat. Frank McWright has sent a Super Chat saying, another issue, the precedence Trump has set. I think you mean the precedent, precedent that Trump has set. He got away with so many awful things before the election, got elected anyway, got away with wiretapping claims, etc. Do you see a rise of similar candidates running in the future? I don't know about similar to Trump, but there's no doubt that Donald Trump has normalized the height of anti-intellectual um, ignorance and buffoonery as a sort of I hate to say legitimate, but it, it won him the election as a sort of legitimate politic of sorts. And when I saw this poll that Dwayne The Rock Johnson was apparently leading Trump in a hypothetical matchup for 2020, I was not at all surprised because now that Trump has won, I believe that there has been an irreversible change to American politics. Now, will there be similar candidates to Trump? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, certainly candidates that don't really know anything um, are, are, have been legitimized. And there's a very interesting video I recommend you watch. The video is about a year old. It's only four minutes long. It's from the Book of Life. And it's about the vision of democracy that Socrates had. And the argument that is made, the argument that, that Socrates made back in, well, before 399 BC, which is when he was tried and, and ultimately um, executed via, via the death penalty for corrupting the youth as well as impiety, and I believe there was one other charge against Socrates. Um, there is uh, uh, this idea of democracy means everybody gets to vote, regardless of whether they're even remotely informed. Socrates had a different version of democracy, which is democracy that actually uh, has some minimum knowledge that we want to ensure the voting population has. I'm not proposing we instill this in the United States. What I am telling you is that when you have democracy in the way that we have it, what we are opening ourselves to is people like Donald Trump who have no business whatsoever running a country and who are embarrassing uh, our, uh, the, the country every single day, spilling secrets to Russia, telling Rodrigo Duterte, the, the, palace, uh, the uh, uh, Filipino president, um, where, our, uh, where two of our nuclear submarines are, etc. It's bad. It's really, really bad, and I encourage you to check out that video. It's very interesting. GR sent a $5 super chat. U.S. Marine Corps etiquette training used Trump's sexual assault assaults as an example of conduct unbecoming until his election. DZ, what's your take on payouts so far? I have no idea what you're talking about. Payouts. I don't know what, what that means, what payouts we're talking about. Um, and I did not know that the United States Marine Corps etiquette training was pointing to Trump as behavior that, that is unbecoming. If it's true, that is very, very interesting. Um, okay, Jennifer Corain has sent a $20 super chat. Jennifer says, I used to joke that if Trump got elected, he'd piss off a country and we would get bombed. I'm starting to think I was right. I can see Donald Trump saying something that angers a country and then retaliating. Please tell me I'm off base. I can't tell you you're off base, Jennifer, because... Next time Trump is on the phone, maybe it's not the Filipino president, but it's someone else. And Donald Trump spills the beans on the presence of uh, who knows what, right? The presence of a nuclear sub here or there that a country didn't know was there or whatever the case may be. That could absolutely lead to um, an attack against the U.S. or its allies or U.S. assets elsewhere. I, I wish I could tell you that you're, you're crazy and off base, Jennifer, but you're, you're kind of not. A uh, Tony Merritt has sent a 10 British pound super chat. Do you have any plans to do an online discussion with Kyle Kolinsky over the Trump Russia debate? I don't know what the debate is. Do you mean the Trump Russia scandal? I, I don't know that there's a debate. As he still seems to take a different point of view to you on it. We've got nothing scheduled right now. Um, I, I mean, it, it depends on what if Kyle wants to talk about stuff, I'm glad to talk about stuff with him. There's nothing planned at the moment. And I didn't think that there was much of a Trump-Russia debate. I mean, what we know is that uh, intelligence experts were concerned at different points by 
interactions between Trump and Russia, Trump uh, uh, associates and Russian officials, and that it's being investigated. I don't know what the debate is, right? I mean, is, is, we don't know yet what it is that is going to come out from those investigations. So to me, there is really no debate. Cameron Llewellyn sent a two Australian dollar super chat. Would love to see Ann Applebaum on the David Pakman show about Trump. Um, I, I know the name, but I don't remember exactly who that is. Ann Applebaum is an American journalist, Pulitzer Prize winning author who has written about communism and the development of civil society in Central and Eastern Europe. Sounds interesting. Um, she has a funny tweet. After this is all over, I never ever want to hear again about how businessmen would run the government better than politicians. Yeah. Uh, fair, fair point. I will leave that up in another tab and um, look into that. that. That seems like it would be very interesting. Kevin Elkin has sent a $5 super chat. No question or comment. Thanks very much, Kevin. I appreciate that. There is finally a CBO score um, for the new version of the American Health Care Act and it is really, really, really bad. The CBO has scored the updated version of the American Health Care Act, which has been passed by the House, by the way, stand still in the Senate because it's Trump scandal day after day after day. Um, the, a, a new version of the American Health Care Act would uh, likely lead to 14 million more uninsured people by 2020, and 23 million more uninsured people within a decade, meaning by 2017, it would also result in higher premiums. Um, uh, anybody surprised? I mean, is, is there any surprise here whatsoever? We knew that this was part of the reason, right, that Republicans in the House were so quick to pass this thing before it could be voted on, most of them without even reading the entire thing, uh, is because they didn't want the CBO to have time to score it because the numbers were going to be a disaster. And it's obviously the case. It, it was everything that we knew, and we didn't know that much about what was actually in the bill, everything we knew about it pointed in exactly this direction. And now we have the numbers 14 million uh, by 2020, uninsured, additionally, 23 million by 2017. Is there any political capital now for Republicans in the Senate to pass this? They would have to pass something. In order to not have these numbers from the CBO, Republicans in the Senate would have to change the bill so drastically that it would not even remotely resemble what Republicans passed in the House. So it, it's just completely unsurprising in every way. And we'll see now what, what the repercussions are politically when it comes to uh, the future of that bill. And you know, th this gets me back to the impeachment discussion that we were talking about earlier. We talked about ways in which an a formal impeachment um, attempt against Donald Trump could not be the best thing for progressives. Think about the last two weeks right, where it has been, we've had scandals the entire Trump presidency, but they've they really accelerated in the last couple of weeks. Who's talking about the health care bill at this point? I, I saw a press conference with Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House, uh, where he tried to talk about, you know, nitty gritty, wonky political stuff. Nobody wants to hear about it, right? Nobody wants to hear about it. The, 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 there's been no progress on AHA since the Trump scandals have accelerated. Um, the tax plan, the tax plan, which we now know is completely unaffordable because of a $2 trillion uh, additional revenue stream for the government that is counted twice. In, it's counted in the budget and it's counted in the tax plan. Did a story on that today. Who's talking about the tax plan now? I mean, yeah, Paul Ryan is trying to, to take attention away from what's going on with Trump. But all of these proposals are at a standstill now because of what's going on with Donald Trump. And this is why I believe that the best scenario politically for progressives might be Trump stays in for the next three plus years. It's scandal after scandal, nothing gets done, and then Republicans implode in uh, 2020 and hopefully also in 2018 in the midterms, although gerrymandering makes that a little difficult. I, I don't know. I mean, that, that actually might be uh, the best path forward. Ellie sent a $10 super chat. 
I'm so proud of the work you guys do. Although politically controversial to many in this country, the show is beneficial and will positively influence our political system over time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ellie, for the, for the kind, kind words. Very, very much uh, appreciate that. Um, okay, what's, can somebody tell me what's going on in the chat? It, it's, I, I, every once in a while, I'll take a look at it. People are calling for other people to be banned. I did block one guy who sent some, some crazy, just insult at people. Uh, but it, it, is, is there, it looks like we might not have moderators uh, today. It might just be me. Do people need to get blocked? Is there, is there something going on that I need to deal with? If so, let me know uh, somehow. It's just the, the, the chat moves very quickly and it's tough to keep up, but I'm seeing escalation in the chat, I guess is what I mean. Uh, Victor Savelle has sent a $20 super chat saying, one last question. I have multiple strong Trump supporters in my family and conversations get heated at times. How would you make a family member think about their blind Donald Trump support and open their eyes besides a David Pakman show link? We uh, have been talking about this on the program a little bit. I believe, Victor, that there is effectively no point in trying to argue point counterpoint with your Trump supporting family members. And we've talked about this with producer Pat because he has uh, Trump supporting family members. I, I don't really, my family mostly doesn't live in the US and they're, they're all liberal that I'm aware of. Um, and it's like different shades of liberal that's more common in Argentina where you've got a stronger, you've got a stronger further left and then you've got the center left and then you've got the middle. There's, there's really no conservatives in my family. I think that you would be much better off um, adopting a sort of Socratic method of questioning to try to just ask questions as to how your family members came to the, the beliefs that they have. So if they say, I love what Trump's doing on the wall. You say, really? Well, what, what has he done that you like? Uh, well, he's building the wall. Hmm. Uh, has construction started? Well, uh, I don't know. No, it hasn't started. It hasn't started. Oh, okay. Um, when, when do you think construction is going to start? Oh, it was, and it's going to start soon. And how long do you think it'll take? Oh, he's going to get it done. Really? Where did you, where, where did you find out that it's going, to, it's going to get done during his first term? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, right. Just ask questions. And another really good approach is what would change your mind about that? What, what could Donald Trump do that would make you not be happy with his presidency so far? Mm, well, I, uh, I don't know. They can't think of anything, that's a red flag, right? So, so you're telling me that you're so ideologically committed to this man that it doesn't matter what he would do? That, that doesn't sound like a thinking person's perspective. Um, and if they, if they come up with some specific things, then you could maybe explore those. I think that that approach is way better, way better than um, trying to play point counterpoint because you're not gonna get anywhere. And actually studies show that the point counterpoint stuff and, and the so-called presentation of facts um, more often further ingrains people in their beliefs. So I, I don't think that that's the, uh, that's the way to go. The, just some thoughts on that, all right? Let me send a couple more thank yous out to people who have been signing up at davidpackman.com slash membership while we've been talking here. There is a coupon code available to you. That coupon code is IVOTED17. Why is membership important? Membership is important because that's the primary source of funding for our show our studio rent, our connectivity, being able to afford staff salaries, being able to do all of the things that we do is funded mostly by people who sign up at davidpackman.com slash membership or make Patreon pledges at patreon.com slash davidpackmanshow. If you want to use the 40% coupon code, by all means use it. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, if, if you prefer to pay full price, by all means do that and skip the coupon code. So big thank yous going out to Stephen Potts. Thank you to Victor Savelle. Thanks to Yazid Abunayan. Thank you to uh, Paul Bental, all of whom have signed up in addition to a whole bunch of other people uh, that I thanked earlier while we've been talking here. And you know, the, the, there's no, this is not a means tested 40% discount. If you can afford the full price, but just don't wanna pay it, I'd rather you pay 60% than nothing at all. 
Uh, if you don't want to use the coupon code, by all means, don't use it. And uh, uh, it's, it's, at this point, it's just important. The more people we can have financially uh, engaged with what we're doing, the better the program will do over time. And in the wake of the YouTube advertiser boycott, that's really, really important. I talked earlier about the Wired magazine article by Davey Alba that uh, went live about five days ago um, about our YouTube channel and what's going on with the YouTube advertiser boycott. Really, really good article pointing that out. Very, very uh, uh, happy with that. Earlier during the, um, actually during April, the April vacation that we had, a very good article in the New York Times by Amanda Hess about our YouTube channel called How YouTube's Shifting Algorithms Hurt Independent Media, well-researched and um, uh, just, just really, really great. And it'll explain to you why it is that I'm talking about Patreon, patreon.com slash David Pakman Show. It'll explain to you why it is that I've been talking about membership. And, uh, you know, we're, we're doing our thing. It has, th th this crisis has not interrupted our program for the time being. My goal is that we don't change a damn thing, right? My, that, that would be my desire in this entire thing. Um, let me preview uh, some of what's going to be on tomorrow's program, okay? Um, Republicans are going to be crushing the poor to pay for the tax cuts that they want to give the rich. This is supply-side economics. It doesn't work. And we're going to go go after that on the program tomorrow. I wanted today to talk about this. But we just didn't get to it because there was so much else to discuss. Infowars has received White House press credentials. Conspiracy propaganda news website led by Alex Jones, Infowars, is now part of the, the milieu there at the White House. Jerome Corsi, an, an absolute nut. Nut job? Wrong word about James, wrong uh, uh, way to characterize James Comey. Right way to characterize Jerome Corsi. Look him up, okay? Jerome Corsi is going to be apparently the Washington bureau chief of Infowars. I mean, this is where we are, folks. Um, and he's going to be at the White House. And uh, within hours of the announcement of that, Alex Jones was criticizing the victims of the Manchester bombing, the Ariana Grande concert bombing. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. We will talk about this fa diplomatic facepalm, as I'm calling it, caught on video in Israel when Donald Trump arrived from Saudi Arabia to Israel and said, hey, we just came from the Middle East. Uh, maybe he's never seen a map. I don't know. We're also going to talk about the Pentagon's concern over Donald Trump mentioning to President Rodrigo Duterte that he has that the U.S. has two nuclear submarines in Korean waters, and the Pentagon did not like that. We will talk, as I just mentioned, about the new Congressional Budget Office score for the American Health Care Act, the Republican-led health care proposal. Uh, 14 million more uninsured people by 2020, 23 million more uninsured people by 2027. 20, uh, and uh, it's bad, all right? Also, as a result of Trump's loose lips in the Oval Office with Russian officials, Israel is going to, they're calling it an alteration to how they share intelligence with the United States. Uh, they're not altering it in the direction of sharing more with us, right? That I can tell you for sure. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. And then I hope to get to the story. If not, we might have to push it off until Friday. Uh, Fox News has fallen to third place in the primetime cable news ratings for the first time in nearly 17 years. A lot of this has to do with the fact that Bill O'Reilly is out and now Rachel Maddow's program is a, a top rated program. A lot of it has to do with the fact that Fox News has been pretending like there's just nothing going on with Trump uh, that's, that's at all concerning for the last three, four months at this point, four months. And people who exclusively watch Fox News genuinely might not know that there's a world of scandals out there. But anybody who's hearing from almost any other news outlet knows that this rosy, this, this version through rose-colored glasses that Fox News is presenting is not informing them. And that's a part of why people are tuning, out of Fox, tuning away from Fox News. So I hope to get to all of those stories and maybe more on tomorrow's program. We're also going to talk to Bill Scher, who's been a longtime frequent guest on the show. He is going to join us to talk about uh, Democrats and gun control and what is going on with that. There's actually a whole backstory to that, and I, I look forward to talking to Bill about that tomorrow. 
Um, let's go back to the super chat. Sezi Canales has sent a $20 super chat saying, peace be with you. Thank you very much, Sezi. And Jacob Ball said uh, with a $5 super chat, Infowars only got a day pass, correct? The same kind they give high school kids. I didn't read about that. Let me see. Infowars day pass White House. Let's see what comes up. Uh, that would be interesting. Yeah. Infowars got a White House day pass just like a real high school newspaper. Um, and there's also a Hill article pointing out that they appear to have gotten a uh, just a day pass and that they're lying about the nature of the pass that they actually got. So that's all very, very good news. And I'm going to add it to uh, my research list here for tomorrow. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about all that. Thank you for pointing that out, Jacob. Uh, very, very relevant. No doubt about it. Um, okay. Patreon.com slash David Pakman Show. DavidPakman.com slash membership. A few more thank yous. Okay. Brian Stewart, thank you for signing up at DavidPakman.com slash membership. Uh, jo Jolene Douglas, thank you for signing up at DavidPakman.com slash membership. And Beverly Attridge, Beverly Attridge, thank you so much for signing up at DavidPakman.com slash membership. The coupon code has been and continues to be available to you. It is I voted 17. It will save you 40% off of membership. That is the number one funding source for the show. Thanks to everybody who joined me today. Another live stream very, very soon.